Hey everyone, it's Book of Catherine. I hope you guys are doing well. No matter where this video finds you across the globe, this June 2020, almost July 2020. So it's been a long time since I've been able to talk to you guys, but while I've been underground, uh, under the COVID-19 kind of closed down, I've been doing a lot of research. And what's wonderful about this entire lockdown is that I've been able to piece together as we've been researching. If you've been following me on Twitter, at Book of Catherine on Twitter, you've been following along my research every single day and watching us do this together as we've been piecing these things together from the last two years in January 2018. Um, so you've actually watched us put this together as we've been going along and we finally pieced it all together, the entire fabric top to bottom, the entire Christmas tree, or as some people say it, um, they like to use the specter, the octopus, Inspector, the W07 octopus, we found the head of the octopus. Um, other people like to call it the New World Order. Uh, they keep saying the shadow government, but they can't figure out who the very top of that is or the top of the pyramid. Um, other people like to call it the Illuminati. Um, I like to call it they. Uh, everyone says, oh, they've made us do this or they've made us do that. Even though we live in a democracy, at least people in the United States live in a democracy where we elect everyone from the ground up. We elect our city uh, mayors. We elect our public school uh, representatives, our uh, school board. We elect our county. We elect our judges. We elect our state governor. We elect our state assemblies. Nowhere else in the entire world does anyone have the ability, not one body of citizens, has the ability to elect as many people as the United States does. The United States Constitution gave immense power to the people about elections. In the democracies of Europe, what people don't understand is that Europe actually never underwent a revolution. France sort of went underwent a revolution, but they never carried through with, say, a Bill of Rights. They never carried through with, say, a uh, constitution. And so the royals in Europe actually still exist. It's kind of funny, if you actually look into it, there's a video on you on YouTube that says the top 10 royals of Europe, the top 10 dynasties in Europe. And they say, they start out by saying, oh, there was this great time of revolution when people went against the monarchies of Europe and they start out with the British as the example of who went against the, the monarchs of Europe. And they list like King Henry and Queen Elizabeth and the Magna Carta is going against the monarchy of Europe. And then Queen Elizabeth is listed. Queen Elizabeth II is listed as one of the great dynasties of Europe. And no one really notices that, that, oh, there was a huge revelation, uh, revolution against the monarchy of Great Britain. And a big revolution happened. A big Magna Carta happened. A parliament was created. And yet there's still, it's still the biggest dynasty and there's still a monarchy. And, and wait a minute, they still, if you look in their papers, for example, if you look back in the 1800s and you look at their papers, all the top headlines are Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace, uh, James St. James's Palace. All the top headlines are the palace, the palace, the palace, the palace. Every single top headline is palace, 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 royal family, royal family, royal family. You look at the 1800s newspapers in America and it's all like battle of here, battle of there, battle, soldiers here, soldiers there, uh, this town here, town there. It all has to do with citizens and the people. All the main headlines have to do with the citizenry in the 1800s. And what's funny is if you really pay attention to it, in my newsfeed anyway, because I research these things, still today, every day my phone gets a ton of headlines about the palace, about Buckingham Palace, Queen Elizabeth, Prince William, this, that. And I realized I started checking who I'm getting all of these notifications about the Queen and the Kings of England. And I realized it's all British newspapers. It's all British owned newspapers or European owned newspapers. They're all still having to report on the royals because they're not free. They don't have free speech. You can't speak about the royals and get away with it. So, um, that's why people did a democratic vote and said, we want out of Bre we want Brexit. And it didn't happen for three years. If you pay attention to the Queen's speech, 
you know, for three years, she got up in front on the Queen's speech in front of Parliament, and she never said, I want Brexit to happen until the third year. And then she said, okay, you know, Brexit is going to happen. And that's when they started talking about Brexit happening. And so it's very, very interesting. She wears a crown and she makes a speech and what she says is actually what happens. They pretend the prime minister is the one that wrote it, but she's the one that's speaking it. They just don't, it's very interesting. And I've been going into my Twitter feed about how that happens, why that happens, how they flipped the script and made it look like they're not actually in power. Um, but Queen Victoria did it on her first day in office on, um, in 1838. She made this whole new speech of how, how to save the monarchy, to stop all these revolutions of people getting their rights. You know, women wanted their rights and uh, slaves wanted their rights. And how do we need to stop this because we'll stop making our money? And they said, let's make this new thing of the crown above party politics. And next thing you know, the Republican Party was born in America. Oh, and suddenly there's a civil war based on party politics. Amazing. Look at that. And what's the party that pulls out and does the civil war? The one that's British, the one that supports the queen. That's the one. And there's a war and the crown looks like it's above party politics. And it's like, oh, if you're a loyalist to the queen or to the crown. Now, what you need to pay attention to, and this is how we found the top of the spider, the center of the spider web, if you will, is what we realized is, I, I've been asking this on my thread, is I've learned that there are a lot of dynasties over time. I've been getting actual physical history books instead of paying to attention to online. I've been having some f history professors that I've met online. They've sent me um, some really great books that I've been getting and also some friends of mine that I already had. I was like, send me some of the history books that you know that are really good. And they sent me some timeline books and some map books that go way back in time. And I was like, what are all these dynasties? that I haven't been taught about. All you ever hear about is Rome. I mean, that's all we hear about. And it turns out that through the continents, Rome was just this little dynasty. Rome at its very peak only ever controlled 60 million people. But at the same time, India had, its dynasty was controlling 100 million people that was right next to it. Why doesn't India get the credit for that, for the Maoran industry? Like his, that empire and that empire actually kicked uh, Alexander the Great's Heine. Well, why do we hear so much about Alexander the Great? And then in the meantime, there's this other stuff going on over here and then the Han Dynasty in China. Why aren't we taught about the Han Dynasty in China? And what I've learned is that at all times over in Europe, there's always been about five dynasties going on right in line wherever Rome was. There's this Egyptian dynasty, the Babylonian industry. Always, always these five going on, one in India, one in China, the Mongolian Empire up in the north. There were always about five or six dynasties going on at the same time. And Rome was just this tiny dynasty happening at the same time. It's probably flipped in your version. When you get this, it'll probably be flipped or whatever. I don't, I don't remember how it works on the camera. But just imagine if I, this is, this is um, the west and this is the east they're all equal and i'm like well why is rome considered so big anymore well remember what they say whoever wins writes history and it was such a perfect perfect such a perfect today just topped it off because what i learned was what i learned was i mean if if all we hear about is rome who tells what does that tell you who won who won in that thing of all the empires that that were all, who won because Rome should have died about 300, 500 AD. That's when Rome was supposed to be dead as an empire. That's what we were told. That's what we're written about. But here's how the Roman emperors ruled. The Roman emperors were the first one to introduce the federal state system. Like right now we have a central government in DC and there's a bunch of federal laws that rule us, and then each state votes in their own laws. So everyone in America has to obey their state laws, and then there are some federal laws that guide us all, right? So that's why we have some problems, because again, under federal law, it's illegal to like have marijuana, but states have made it legal to have marijuana. So there's some discrepancy there. There's some federal law, and then there's some state law. Well, Rome was the first one to do that. Romans, there is Rome, had federal law, 
that all the things that all the states that they conquered had to live by. And then they had states, all the little areas or civilizations they conquered. They would overput kings in each of their little areas. They'd say, okay, we conquered an area. Let's say they conquered Germany. They would find someone in Germany that they trusted and then they put them up as king and they'd be like, all right, you rule Germany for us. Now go ahead, you can have your own religions. You can have your own custom laws. You can only have things. Just make sure that they, you know, give taxes and everything. They make sure they give taxes. And here are the Roman laws so everyone knows. Just give to Caesar what Caesar's just so that they all understand they're still conquered by Rome, right? And so usually the way they all knew it is if they conquered an area, Rome was the first one to tattoo slaves. If they conquered an area, they took all the able-bodied men and tattooed, put ink into their shoulder, and that was it. And people don't understand that. They think that the first time tattooed numbers happened was Nazi Germany. No, Nazi Germany also was, which I'll get to, but basically Nazi Germany used all Roman used all Roman symbology. And that's how I traced it back. I kept tracing back what this new world order, whatever, what symbology, kept tracing it back. And then I'd be like, well, what's this eagle come from? I kept tracing it back. And then I'd find Rome using this eagle. And I'd trace that back. I'd find Greece and oh, the tracing that back. And oh, the eagle is Zeus. And I trace that back. And I find out that there's this Zeus temple in Pergamum and all these things. And then they took that temple in Pergamum, moved it to Berlin, right before World War I and World War II broke out. Very interesting stuff how it's all tied together. And then they said, bring Rome back, and they put the eagle on for World War I and World War II, Zeus's eagle. And that's why the eagle is the, is the marching thing of Rome, and it's just this, um, that's what that eagle is for. And so that's why we were tracing it all through, and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm kind of getting everywhere, and that's what I do. So anyway, I was tracing it all. Long story short, I'm sorry that I lost my train of thought, but I also found out that's one of the things why I've been gone. I learned that I have FND, Functional Neurological Disorder. So everyone can go ahead and look that up, what FND is. It's basically, I have a feeling that it's connected to all the meds. Every time when I look in my life when I have weak legs or I'm not able to get my legs to work, uh, I had just put on some series of meds. I don't know. I haven't confirmed that with my doctor. Um, but it seems to happen to dancers a lot who have injuries. Um, but basically, I've been through some serious, seriously, serious big injuries. And it kind of, you know, your bones get out of knock and all of a sudden your bones, that joint doesn't work. And then if you get the joints put back into things, the, it finally works well. It's kind of like my brain gets out of joint with the rest of my body and my brain can't get signals to it. And you guys have watched me on the stretch machine work uh work basically getting my signals to work those certain areas of the body you've watched me get connection to muscles again and work that through and my procedures have really helped with that so hopefully with this new um, diagnosis uh, i'm going to be able to uh, have a lot more function in my body and start getting the cognitive that's one of the biggest things they said i needed to work with is one of the biggest signs is cognitive function is that I have a very, very hard time processing things, staying on target, staying on topic, those sorts of things. I used to teach staying on topic, staying and keeping in a line, and I'm not able to do that because of my functional neuro neurologic disorder. So now you guys all know why I'm all over the place. So anyway, so in the long, whole long and short of it, what I learned was this, we learned that it is the, I learned that the Pope is not actually the Pope. The Pope is the Roman Emperor. And we learn signs of this because the mausoleum where the Roman emperors were buried are right next to the Vatican. The Vatican is, shares the same catacombs with the emperor's mausoleum. Um, we also learned that all they did when Constantine converted to Christianity, all he did was take all the pagan sacrifices, holidays, etc that Romans celebrated, all he did was take all of them and just rename them with a Christian term. Um, so say Christmas, that was their, they celebrated, uh, the Roman Empire celebrated on December 25th. The Roman Empire made everyone celebrate on December 25th their sun goddesses and sun gods, their birth of their sun god and sun goddess on December 25th. So when he converted to Christianity, he just said, oh, now that's the birth of Jesus Christ. And same thing with Easter. Today, the Roman emperor or the pope um, 
puts Easter, notice it changes every single day, every single year. Well, that's actually set by the Pope. Uh, it's set by the first full moon after the spring equinox. Has nothing to do what's in the Bible. If you actually read which is what's in the Bible, which we finally did uh, in the last year, which kind of broke everything open, because when you actually read the Bible, you're like, uh-oh, none of this matches what the Pope in Rome is actually doing. And you find out the Pope in Rome is still just a Roman emperor. Um, what happens is in, in the Bible, you find out Jesus was actually killed on Passover and it breaks it down on the sixth hour, on the third hour, the last supper was distant and it's all on the Jewish Passover. Well, why is it the Jews celebrate Passover and no one's celebrating Easter? I mean, they, the Bible breaks it down hour by hour by hour, Jesus's death, but the Pope in Rome has nothing to do with the Jewish Passover. They celebrate Easter based on pagan full moons. And when I say pagan, we've also learned pagan just means witchcraft and witchery, which the Bible is huge about going against. Like massive. I mean, it's like don't like sorceries and sorceress. If you go into the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, the things that go like the bracelets like Buddhists like to wear or that the um, Hollywood like they say all the. Hollywood producers, they stack up their production assistants with like huge bracelets of the meditation bracelets. And then they go around when they're doing reality shows and they take off a bracelet and they're like, before you fill it with scene, because most people don't wear bracelets and they tear off a meditation bracelet and they're like, here, which one matches your outfit? Da, 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 da. And they make them wear one because they want that pagan. They want us to start wearing these things just like to ce celebrating this December 25th so that we don't notice all of our friends and family who are starting to celebrate this witchcraft and witchery. It turns out in the Bible, the first mention of witchcraft and witchery there's this huge passage that's like the, the Lord in the Bible in the Old Testament, like rails against the bracelets of witches and sorceresses and the bracelets that they wear. And I, I, when I first read it, I was like, holy crap, like, isn't that a really, really big thing that's in now? A big trending thing for the Druids to wear? And, the, and I see it everywhere. And then I found out from my people in Hollywood to watch for it, and I did. I finally saw it when the 90 Day Fiancés, when a production assistant came out in front of the camera to help one of the ladies up, and right there, strung up on their arms, was a huge thing of these meditation bracelets, and I was like, you gotta be kidding me, um, which I shouldn't be surprised by now. So anyway, so uh, now I remember what I was talking about. So all the way back in Rome, the way the Roman emperor ruled was they had, they ruled all these states and federal systems. Well, when, Constantine, what happened was Christianity, when Jesus touched down or whatever, Christianity took off like big time. If you look into it, the churches spread like wildfire and pretty much it caused so much disruption in the pagan holidays. If you read about it, um, some of the biggest, uh, if you look into the history of the Christian church or the history of the Jewish, the, all these things are, if you look, start reading the older text, the the printed ones, not the online ones that they've been able to rest, race, but the Google books. Um, if you start looking into those, they have really, really specifically recorded history of the, the people who died in those Colosseums. Those people took really, really careful recordings of what happened there and really, really detailed the dates and everything, really crazy recordings of all of that. And what they're really angry about, both the Jews and the people in the, the, the Romans, they're very, very angry that these Christians are taking away their temples and their holidays because people used to offer up all these taxes and make them a ton of money and people would just give them everything in order to sacrifice. Well, under this new church or whatever, Jesus was really against taxes. And so the upper crust was losing a ton of money. That's why America was such an abomination to the one percent or the the royals in Europe because they didn't have any taxes. No one made money from taxes, which is why you can tell now that the Catholic Church now that notice how many congressmen are Catholic and suddenly our taxes were the highest ever before Trump. They're highest ever in our history when all of our congressmen were Catholic and still people are still electing Catholics into our Congress. They seem to think that's more trustworthy. And I'm like, kind of look back in the history. Um, so anyway, uh, what they did is they would rule in this federal state uh, system. And when Constantine converted to Christianity, just renamed everything. And any Christian who would read the text and figure out, oops, 
you know, this isn't actually, these are pagan holidays. That's who they would murder on the spot and hold, you know, burn at the stake. And what, as they conquered more, as Constantine conquered more, he saw a sign sky, the cross, by this sign shall I conquer, shall thee conquer. And he started making the Christian sign this cross, which is actually the sign of Isis, right? Crucifixions is the sign of Isis. That's why I say, like, who made the sign, who made the Roman cross, the Roman, you know, method of killing people, the most cruel method of killing people, the sign of Christianity. Are you kidding? Like the actual Christians of the day used the miracles of the loaves and the bread. That was the sign of Christ. The first church ever had two, lo two fishes, a fish made into two fishes. That was the sign of a Christian church. Um, and so, but Rome made this like make that the sign of Christianity and you'll conquer the world. Just use Jesus and you'll conquer the world. And so they did, they conquered Europe, they conquered the Celts, they conquered uh, Irish, they conquered Scotland. And what they did was the same thing they always did. They made each area, they made a governor to overrule it, but they named those governors kings and they named them queens. And then eventually those kings and queens expanded their empires into slave corporations. Queen Elizabeth started one of the first ones, the East India Trading Company. And uh, with uh, Pope's backing, uh, Queen Isabella started another one. She did all of Latin America, Queen Elizabeth, all through East India Trading Company. I can't, uh, it's amazing. The, just the fact that America is the one that's bl blamed for slavery when they lost a million people trying to end the practice, when the royals of Europe started the practice, like, no, Rome, like, they've been, slavery has been around since the beginning of mankind, and Rome invented the neck chain, like, the Romans invented the neck chain, but now Romans are used, like, we clicked on a video today, um, my husband was like, what's this, how you can wake up earlier, he clicked on it, and it was like, oh, this Roman thing said this, and because the Roman, and I was like, why are we going back to a Roman emperor? Like Roman emperors created crucifixions, used crucifixions to rule. Roman emperors created the neck chains and used black slaves. They enjoyed it. Roman emperors pillaged all of you, were the first ones to start emptying a civilization of their riches and gold, pulled all of Egypt's, like, uh, you know, like started taking their pyramids apart and started taking their things down and ripping it out and moving it to Rome. I'm like, they're the first one to pillage a society. Why are we suddenly listening to Roman emperors? And I was like, well, now we know why, because we know that a Roman emperor is still in charge. And this was a big piece of research. So it turns out when Rome was first founded in 543 BCE, they started a new society, and I can get into that later, all that we learned, but they started a new society, and what they called their the ruler was Pontifex Maximus. And it turned out that a ruler of Rome was both a religious ruler, the head of sacrifices to their pagan gods, and also a political ruler. So Rome's new ruler, when Rome was founded, their ruler was both the head of sacrifices, religious, a religious ruler, and a political ruler. And their head name was, the political title was emperor or ruler, and the religious title was Pontifex Maximus. So when Jesus touched down or whatever was born, or however you want to um, label it, but when Jesus was born, Caesar Augustus, look it up, Caesar Augustus was known as Pontifex Maximus. As what and you can look it up. There are statues of him, not just in a big emperor, not just as the sword, right? As him as emperor and warrior. There's also statues of Caesar Augustus in these white robes. He kind of looks like um the the white robes actually look exactly like Princess Leia when she's like, help me one Kenobi, you're my only hope. That's exactly what the white robes look like because he's the head of all the temple sacrifices and they did human sacrifices as well. That's why it was such a big deal they got rid of them when uh, Christianity, that's why Christianity spread so fast because Christianity didn't have any animal sacrifices or human sacrifices. It was a religion without human or animal sacrifice. And all pagan religions had human and animal sacrifice. That's the point. 
That was why Christianity was so big. They were like, no more blood needs to be shed. And that was what G uh, Christianity taught was because Jesus had been the ultimate sacrifice. No more sacrifices were needed. Big threat to Rome. Big, big threat to Rome. And so what happened was, is that if you look it up, the title of Pontifex Maximus, even on Twitter, if you try to tag the Pope, it'll say Pontifex. It actually says in Britannica, it says the title of Pope or the title Pontifex Maximus was the Roman Emperor and is now used for popes. They're the political and religious leader. And what do the popes do today? So what happened is kings and queens still ruled and the Pope governed over them and used them as governors to rule over the people. Well, all the European kings and queens still rule. They are still in control. They still rule. They are still the government. Look into it. They still have all the power. I've researched Queen Victoria heavily. One of the best ways, and they still answer to the Pope. One of the best ways you can tell it. Here's proof number one. Proof number one, there's still a church tax in Europe church tax in Europe. 10% of all people's income still go to either the church in Greece or the church in Rome. The church in Greece is the Protestant church. The church in Rome is the Catholic church. It is the So one or the other, and church, Greece and Rome are the same. They have the same gods, the same thing. Same thing. Same families. Parnassus, look it up. Like if you look up the family of Parnass, Parnassus, there's Mount Parnassus in Greece. And they have the school of Parnassus in Italy. Same thing, same thing. No different. Same overlocking, right? Because they went and founded Rome and I went into all of that. They, if you look it up, they had the first Olympic Games and then boom, suddenly Rome is founded. It was just their warriors to go and conquer without Greece having to suffer any backlash because there's this huge Italian mountains that prohibited Rome forever getting hit. But Greece, if anyone had ever known it was Greece doing it, they were in total, anyone could go ahead and hit Greece. So it's really, really great. Rome did all of the dirty work. It's a nice way of Grecian families and getting all the money without ever having to be touched. So Rome is really their soldiers, their people going out. So um, that's why you can still see Grecian, perfect way of seeing it, Everyone thinks that Greece's uh, dynasty is done. There is no Greek royals anymore. Nope, if you actually read it, read it really, really close. Even in the articles that say the last Greek royals, read the whole article and boom, in the thing where it says the end finally came. First exact sentence, first sentence says they retain their titles out of courtesy. If you retain your titles, that means you retain all the money, you retain all the taxes, you retain all the crown. Nope. You know, America didn't retain any king. No one's called King of America. We let go of our king. King George III is no longer our king. You know, so anyway, so what we basically discovered was the Pope of Rome is still the Roman Emperor. Rome won. Okay. And the way we connected it to the UN and the Sustainable Development Goals and the Global Goals and everything like that is that it turns out that the German Pope, you know, the Nazi Pope, the German Pope, um, he's still been coming out. He has still been coming out. You know, the guy that was a Nazi youth when he was young and his story has changed like 8 million times in just the past year. It's changed a bunch of times on whether he was supposed to be in it, whether they forced him to be in it, whether it, who, it doesn't really matter. The point was he was born after Hitler came under rule. He was born after it. He was raised under it and they still chose him to be it. They had 230 cardinals to choose from and 115 cardinals out of 120 voting cardinals still chose a guy raised under Hitler and actually in the Nazi youth, they still chose him as the best choice in the whole entire globe to lead the Catholic church or to lead the Roman empire. That's the point. It doesn't matter whether he was in a, he was raised under you know, watching the Holocaust around him. And they chose him to lead. Now, we all know who led the Holocaust. That was BASF, oil, chemical, gas, big pharmaceutical. And we all know BASF is still going. And wouldn't you know it, out comes the German Pope. And what does he do? He goes and visits Germany for five days. And what happens on day one, June 18th? He lands in Berlin or he lands in Germany and oh, BASF has its virtual investors meeting. 
So all of a sudden they have a 20% drop from COVID and they're like, oh, we don't have to, they get to tell their investors, you don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about a buyout. We don't have to worry about a activist takeover. Don't you worry because hey, look, everyone can see the Pope landed. And then for the next five days, all these reports come out on everything, oil, gas related, coal, market forecasts come out for the next five days. And I published like for the next five, then he leaves and he comes back to Rome. In those five days, I start sharing with you like what those, in all those five days, I was like, wow, lots going on with BASF because I have, you know, like alerts on my thing. And I'm like, wow, I'm getting a lot of alerts on BASF because I get alerts on, I get alerts on BASF, but for those five days, I was getting a lot of alerts on BASF, a lot of alerts. And I didn't know the Pope had been in Germany all five days that I was getting all those alerts, amazingly enough. And then I looked up those market things and wouldn't you know it, the market forecasts. Do you know what, if I wanna get the market forecast for BASF, not just BASF, it turns out you can get a market forecast for BASF, DuPont, and like Castella, somewhat other thing, whatever. Three massive chemical things. Guess what it says? If you pay three grand, you can get a report on the next five years, 2020 to 2025. And it gives like 11 areas of ways they can go ahead and forecast for you what the market's gonna look like, what the upcoming regulations are gonna be, what the bumps are gonna be, what the roadblocks are gonna be, where they're gonna be, what countries they're gonna be in, who is gonna cut, all these things that would only know if you were in control of the global goals of sustainable development and had a bunch of congressmen under your wing and had just launched the, like, and do you know when they launched the global goals? Do you know when they did the update and could have all that underlined for you? That would be last fall when the Pope came out and had a massive meeting of the global goals, had a huge meeting just last September and he came out and I had just been like, hey, you know, the German Pope just came out and, and that actually lines up with this other, the huge sustainable, a global meeting, usually the sustainable development, it's just Latin America or it's just China or it's just the Asian, no, globally the leaders came together and it just happened to be when the German Pope came out. And now they're forecasting this thing and you can buy it for $3,000 or if you're a company, it's like $6,000. And wouldn't you know it, all these things, that's insider trading folks, insider trading that benefits German manufacturing and industries. That's how these hidden champions win all the time. And you know who they're using to do it? University partnerships. That explains Zoo Research's report that says, hey, German industries only are 1.6% of the market in size, but gosh, they have 48% of all global sales. Well, that would probably be because we have a Roman emperor disguised as a pope that everyone thinks is a religious leader when in reality, we've got a ton of people around the world donating one tenth of their entire salaries as tithing, even though Jesus Christ in his actual text says it's over. No more of that. Everything you do should be in private or else it's null and void. Churches aren't even legal under Jesus. He says everything you should do is private in your own home. There are no churches. Everything's in private. There are no churches. Like everything's private. Everything's in a home. There are no churches with steeples where you can go. He says if you lift up your hands in prayer and sing, you're null and void. All that action is null and void before God. You wear a cloak, it's null and void before God. They're the biggest antichrist thing. They go against every single Christian teaching. And not only that, but they're totally 100% behind this entire movement of everything focused on Israel. Not to mention the fact that the other Pope, Pope number two, Pope Francis, did you guys know that he just went and made a deal with the Islamists in the Middle East? and took out everything that says Jesus in the most up-to-date religion of what the Catholic Church teaches. 
you won't find Jesus Christ in their pages. He's not mentioned. If you want to talk about anti-Christian and anti-Christ, well, there you go. So there you go. You want to know what the top of the Christmas tree is, the center of the spider, whatever? You want to know what the head of Spectre is? Go ahead and start following Pope Benedict, Joseph Ratzinger. You want to know why Soros has all of his money going around and it just happens to benefit German industries? It has nothing to do with a royal family. It has everything to do with the fact that he was also a Nazi German youth, just like Joseph Ratzinger. I guess none of us noticed when James Bond started up again. Did you notice that in the very first one, the bad guy, when he pulls into Venice, the bad guy at the movie that broke our heart and she died and she drowned and love was broken in half and it just tore us apart. Didn't you notice? He drives his little sailboat in and who does he see? He sees a Nazi, one eye patch. That Nazi's name was Adolf. And in the background was a big, huge Catholic church. Italy, Venice. Trying to tell us all along, even the bad guy looked like Soros. But more than anything in that thing, it's the Catholic church at the center. Should have told us anything. The money ends at the church. Peace out. You wanna be holy? Maybe you should start reading instead of kneeling. Au revoir.